Hey guys, welcome to the show. This is episode number four. Out in the daytime here in Johannesburg. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. You know, sometimes whenever we record videos out in the public places, we always get people like looking at us, driving past, what are you doing? But it's fine. You know, some people frown for it. I feed off the attention which is pretty cool so so the next part of the show is going to be an 8 to 10 minute video guys uh, I hope you enjoy this next show episode 4 it's been pretty uh, exciting it's pretty exciting it's been it's been a few years off uh, finally getting to do what we want to do as a company we spent in the past five years uh, sharing the messages for companies and corporates and business individuals and we've been writing and documenting what Hashtag South Africa needs to do. By the year 2030, South Africa needs to be a far better place than it is today. It's going to take us as citizens to make a difference. So that's why we ask you to understand the National Development Plan or understand how to use the internet if you don't really care about what's really going on in the governments and countries. Understand how to make use of it, guys. Technology is changing, all right? Things that you used to do, things that your parents used to use is irrelevant. Technology I used five years ago, I'm not even using today. Same with regards to the social media platforms you're using. When MySpace was out, it was pretty fun, it was awesome. Tom, hey man, shout outs to you bud. But Zuckerberg took over. And then thereafter people are saying, Facebook's gonna be forever. It's not gonna be there forever, guys. Come on, be realistic. But that's why you need to record your content, share the information about who you are and connect with people around the world so that you can at least start making money. That's what it's all about. Make money in your trade, day trade. If you have a day job and you're saying that you wanna get something done, work in the evening. There's no stopping this. You gotta keep on going, gotta keep on moving. So yeah, guys, hope you enjoy the show. Hey guys, just a quick uh, update. It's uh, 10.33 on Sunday, the day before the video is released. And we found a video clip of Chief Justice for the Constitution Court of South Africa. And he spoke a day before I did at the, the CSI corporate function held at the Gibbs Business Institute. So I've added the clip. So I think you guys as South Africans need to learn about the importance of how we need to govern ourselves from corruption. But I'll let the Chief Justice complete the talk and then it'll be followed, be followed by my speech. If there ever was the time to embrace ethical leadership and stop spinning, stop manipulating, Stop relying on our supporters or sympathizers to do wrong knowing that our wrongdoing would be covered up in some way. That time is now. Ethical leadership leaves no room for corruption. Ethical leadership leaves no room for the manipulation of politicians by the corporate world, allowing funding of political campaigns to influence how you govern your people, allowing funding of political campaigns by the business community to dictate whether you are going to shake your key responsibilities or give practical expression to the constitutional aspirations of your people is the corruption that comes into being that is facilitated by the absence of ethical leadership. And that explains why ethical leadership really isn't an option but a national imperative. Because when you are a leader, you have it within yourself, you have the authority to influence those that you lead. And it is what you do that largely determines what those who follow you are likely to do. This is a talk that I did at Gibbs Business Institute. You'll be able to see in detail what we spoke about. So check it out, have a look. And guys, it's just not just someone rambling and talking. This is Conrad from Hashtag South Africa and I'll be able to build up credibility in the market this year in South Africa. So enjoy the show, get some advice, what we taught some of the greatest people in the corporate social industry. And yeah, look forward to your comments below. Bye. Information in uh, understanding what's going on around you and the bridge between projects and uh, CSI and the broader, broader business. And uh, he's worked in a number of different uh, Industries and, and uh, but specifically in this space with the companies called Hashtag SA. And uh, so, Conrad, thanks very much for joining us. If you could give us a, him a big one, warm up. 
Hi, good, um, good morning, everyone. Good morning. I thought let's maybe just take a, a quick refresher. We'll all just stand up to our feet. Uh, get that blood circulating. That'd be great. <laughs> you know, they always say uh, people are always remembered um, by their names and for the things they do. Take a quick moment, just say hi to the person next to you. Greet them by your second name. the present and where we're going in the future. And I thought maybe let's start with the future for a bit. This is a picture of Mars. This is not some fantasy, this is not some movie story. But by the year 2030, we will have a man-made colonized mission to Mars. And this is important. We're not just taking our technology with us there. And even though it might be primitive because we're just starting off on that planet, but we're taking our principles, our character, and who we are as mankind to a new ecosystem. So what we do on that planet will determine who man truly is. But before we look that far ahead, let's just look back a few million years back. This is Pangaea. Now, if you don't, for those of the geography in school, Pangaea was where our continents were originally together as one, and it separated over 375 million years ago. This is the planet of where we are right now. Planets apart, people born, people grown up, understanding who they are and what they do in different languages and cultures, yet we still have the same people at the end of the day. I was fortunate enough to spend some time overseas and I managed to see this. I, a lot of weekends I spent at Tate's Modern in London and I got to hear a lot of paintings of people that lived of old and I realized great people once lived on our earth. It's us that live today and we are pretty much that living word, that living history that's supposed to be made. So whatever we do going forward in our lives needs to be archived and documented because we determine what's to come going forward. So when we look at life, we look at people, and people at the roots of it are passionate. They have a gift, they have an ability. Many people look to their governments for their source of income, or source of opportunity, but many people fail to realize that their governments were created to manage the land and the passions of the people that live in it. Now, people plus passions equals sustainable growth. We've seen that in a lot of things we do. Speaking to a room of people in CSI, it shows that you've got a bit of heart in you, that you're looking to go against the wish of the run of time where people are doing different things. So, let's look a bit of our past. Right, everyone's okay so far? Yeah. Right, we are still on earth, don't worry about it. <laughs> so for the past 400 years has been, or well, the past 500 years, there's been four changes that we could call a global revolution. In the 14th, 15th century, Martin Luther uh, published with Johann Gutenberg, the Bible. So one of the most uh, stolen books, I believe, in exclusive books. Uh, but he quoted that it was the protein was God's highest grace on mankind. If we look in 1876, we had the telephone which was invented. This increased the way we communicated with each other. In the olden days, uh, people will come into the, into the town villages and the leader or the elder, the governor or the king will speak to the people and because the king was educated to, to advise. So whatever the king said was the written word and people just believed it. But as time developed, people got an access to that knowledge and that changed things. In the 19th century, we had uh, radio and a bit of moving pictures on the screens that came up. So back then, we had conversations and groups in two different categories. If you wanted to have a conversation, you'd have to go to groups of people. If you wanted to find out about physics and genetics, you'd have to go to certain seminars like you would here at Gibbs. 
This is a picture of the internet right now. It looks very scattered and different, but each little dot out there is an IP address, is a computer, and each computer is connected onto a link, and that link is the internet. The internet has changed the way we've communicated since the age of Babylon, where people lived together in one tribe. We kind of like living in a new age of Babylon, but with digital. Everyone's speaking their different languages, the characteristics of who they are, and recording that information online. But not just recording, contributing and actioning it for today. So the internet is the first native support system to create groups for conversations at the exact same time. And this is principles that I'm laying as a foundation, so before we get into the action of Facebook and Twitter, you'll understand where I'm going at. So the old mediums gave us knowledge, and the new mediums, which is the internet, gives us access to the knowledge, but also the intelligence of individuals today. We don't have to wait for textbooks at schools and, excuse me, lecture, but we can tap into great minds of today. You can be given a speed talk here today, and people in Nairobi or Kenya or in Australia can tap into that knowledge that he just learned and spoke today. So it's not just that we live in an information age, but we live in an age of network intelligence. So as mankind, we need to unite. We need to ensure that what we write, what we say, the policies and advocacies, the CSI projects that we initiate out there, are really making impactful change, not just for today, but for legacies ahead. You know, being South Africans, this should be uh, something that we are familiar with, only just 22 years into democracy. We see a change of government at times. I was still a young, a young boy at the time, but uh, growing up, I got to see and meet some of these people that fought in the struggle, and some of them are still in power today. Some might be doing wrong, but some are still doing good. But we need to look at the longer-term history of South Africa. That's why we call ourselves a National Development Plan Company. Because by the year 2030, we need to change the way we do things. We cannot be doing the same things we do today by the year 2030. Not just for us, but for our children's sake. So let's just look at the present, the digital age. The digital age has changed the way we communicate, we engage. Most of us found out about this, in, uh, about this event from an email. It was not just some messenger riding on a horseback on a trumpet coming to your town to tell you that this event's in place. So we have uh, civilized ourselves with digital technology. Uh, the World Economic Forum took place earlier this year, uh, and it spoke about the importance about the fourth industrial revolution, and technology plays a great part in every industry of society. I've been fortunate enough to be on the internet and having a computer since 1992, and that has helped me to, back then communication groups were small and different. They were chat rooms and forums, and you would meet and engage with people. And you can actually meet those people offline. And as the years went by, new platforms went up, search sites came up, and then the social media boom arose, and there was a mass gathering of everyone online. I'm sure if we, uh, by show of hands, who here at least has one social media account? I should put two hands up for my sake. <laughs> so, you know, the statistics has changed. If we had to ask that question five years ago, maybe one person would have picked their hand up in the room. This change will change again by next year. So I want to be discussing to you some different principles on how you can make use of these social media platforms. There's always new platforms out there, but it's always important to get yourselves on the ones where people gather the most. I always make the example, for example, you, let's say the neighborhood's market, there's a free market stand. You go there and gather, but there's different individual stands. So you, can, you take it as the neighborhood's is like, or the, the free market is the internet, and each stand is a social media platform. Everyone's trying to get and win your attention to come to their stand to buy something. So is the case for your CSI projects that you market on social media. So when we look at Facebook, Facebook generally is a platform for connecting people to friends and family as well as to interest groups. Uh, gone are the days, or still developing on the days, where you can engage with someone today uh, in line with what you're working on. If you're busy working on a, a project Say, for example, you need to feed maybe 100,000 kids in a certain area, yet you need to find logistics and stuff in that community. You can use social media for that with location tracking. Hashtags, which is generally uh, what everyone's talking about, hashtag this, hashtag that. But if we look at the general history of it, back in school, the verb was known as the doing word. Yeah, everyone agree with that? So a hashtag is pretty much the action word on social media. So if you hashtag the word, you are ensuring that that word in this sentence is the main focus. That's why you sometimes see people with many different hashtags in a sentence. They're trying to maybe reference you to many things. I've also started trying to do a few things, uh, a new thing about a few years ago, where I don't just use one hashtag, but I use various. What I do is I link hashtag technology to hashtag healthcare. So people can actually see what's going on in those two news feeds 
and migrate, pull information, or maybe contribute to that conversation. Television has been around for, for a while. We've grown up with it. I remember waiting for 4 o'clock or 3 o'clock for KTV or something to come on, just that deep noise. But since then, content has grown. And not just content given to us by subscribers and huge companies, but by individuals out there. The rise of bloggers, it's pretty much giving the voice to every single person out there. Everyone can have their minutes, not just their 15 minutes of, of fame, but for the next 300 years, their names will be remembered on digital archives. So what you say and what you post is so important. <coughs> Instagram has been uh, followed thereafter after Facebook and Twitter. Uh, and it was actually bought by Facebook recently. It culminates where you're allowed to share 12 second videos, uh, where you can post different images, as well as join on the hashtag community. And it's pretty awesome. So, you say for example you have different social media platforms already. You need to look at forming a social media strategy. And that way right there is like, I, have, I don't have anything. <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoyed the talk that I gave at the Gibbs Business Institute. Uh, it went a lot more deeper into strategy and explanations and tools and kits. Uh, we did a, lot of, a big Q&A session at the end. Uh, but if you'd like to book myself, Conrad, from Hashtag South Africa to speak at your event, your venue, your conference, your shoebox event, wherever it may be, give us a call, visit us on our website, on our details. And now we look forward to working on our next video. Number five.